Richard Fireman, R I C H A R D, F I R E M A N, 374 Laughing River Road, Mars Hill, North Carolina, 28754. This is a hard act to follow. It's, it's not really an act, but um, I'm so impressed by all the children that have turned out here and, and the citizen turnout. And I know that I've testified before this commission many times before, and um, I, I hope it's not the last time I testify before this commission. I hope that some of you stay <laughs> on the commission um, as the politics unfolds in the state, because um, as uh, we heard that many of you have science backgrounds, and uh, I think that's really important. Um, I was going to bring uh, a piece of coal into the hearing room tonight, and um, it was about the size of my fist, and I was not allowed to bring it in. Security said that coal is a lethal weapon. <laughs> I said I chop it up into small pieces. They said coal is a lethal weapon. <laughs> coal is not clean. Coal is not dirty. You can wash dirt off your hands. And as we all know, what comes out of the mining, processing, transportation, and burning of coal and the storage of coal kills us. Um, it kills us in so many ways. And we've known this for over 450 years. In 1661, John Evelyn wrote to King Charles II of England and the Parliament about the inconvenience of the air and smoke in London caused by the burning of coal. Today, the science tells us how coal kills, and it's much more than an inconvenience. Your action, commissioners, on this IRP is the most important decision that this commission, as an official servant of the people of North Carolina, will ever make. It will determine the health and viability of all life in our beautiful state from this time forward. If you allow Duke and Progress Energy to continue to burn coal, the future of our citizens is doomed to a world of heat that humans have never experienced. These IRPs are a death sentence for all future generations. Coal kills people today. And there's two documents that I want to submit in, as evidence that have been written by Physicians for Social Responsibility. This is how coal kills. 100,000 miners have died in our country since 1900. Every day, three miners die from black lung disease, 24,000 Americans die prematurely every year from coal-related exposures. 550,000 asthma attacks per year are attributed to coal. 38,000 non-fatal heart attacks are attributed to coal. 70% of all railroad traffic in this country is related to coal transport. And in 2007, there were 246 coal-related deaths from those accidents. In a 2008 analysis, it was estimated that if we counted all the external public health and social costs from burning coal to our electric bill, we should be paying two to four times the amount that we are now paying, totaling about $345 billion per year added onto our electric charges. And the reference for that is in this document. Duke and progress are passing these costs on to the health industry, local governments, state and federal governments, and more importantly, to our children and grandchildren who will not be able to pay the price because we won't be able to restore the lost land, the polluted water, the dead oceans, and the overheated world. The dirty truth is that we are paying to kill ourselves while Duke and progress profit. It boggles my imagination that Duke is planting 24% and Progress planting 19% of our electricity to the burning of coal 
in the next 15 to 20 years. What a failure of imagination. Aren't 450 years of burning coal for our energy needs more than enough? If we allow the Duke and Progress to burn coal in the next 20 years, we will be doomed to a world that's four degrees centigrade warmer. That's seven to eight degrees Fahrenheit. And this report is part of the record. A four degree world, written by the radical environmental organization, the World Bank. <laughs> Drought and crop failures in the U.S. Superstorm Sandy in 2012, followed by Hurricane Irene in 2011, devastated New York and New England. Sandy killed over 100 people in the U.S. We didn't read about Typhoon Bofa that killed over 1,000 people in the Philippines in December. All these make clear that the future of climate change is now and is a real threat to human civilization and most life on Earth. Four degrees warmer means that for many of us on the continental of the United States, the coolest months will be warmer than the warmer months now. The coolest months will be warmer than the warmest months now. We won't be able to grow crops. We won't be able to work outside. Your decision on these IRPs will determine the fate of all future generations of North Carolinians, including your grandchildren and my grandchildren. No one is exempt, and you and only you only hold the power and the moral responsibility to determine our collective future. I'm reminded of Martin Luther King's sermon, Beyond Vietnam, that he wrote in 1967. Quote, we are now faced with the fact that tomorrow is today. We are confronted with the fierce urgency of now in this unfolding conundrum of life and history, there is such a thing as being too late. Procrastination is still the thief of time. Life often leaves us standing bare, naked and ejected with a lost opportunity. The tide of the affairs of men does not remain at the flood, it ebbs. We may cry out desperately for a time to pause in her passage, but time is deaf to every plea and rushes on. Over the bleached bones of and jumbled resi residue of numerous civilizations are written the pathetic words, too late. Commissioners, it's not too late to say no to coal. Reject these IRPs as written and demand a clean, responsible energy future for our children. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. Uh, please uh, identify those. Uh, uh, I won't submit the written testimony because some of it was ad libbed and you have it there. And then there's the three documents on coal and health and the one on heat. We'll mark those as fire exhibit one. Were there questions for the witness? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're going to take a 10 minute break.